That's a wonderful body, isn't it? It's a spirit body, and it must have something that nobody quite understands. All I know is what the Word says. But he could eat or he could not eat. He could be here one moment, could be there another. They think it's tremendous to go to the moon. Well, I think that's not even... That's baloney compared to what that new body's able to do. Because one moment you can be in the presence of the Father, and the next moment you can be out there working a typewriter or an IBM or whatever else he's going to have. I don't know. Isn't it wonderful? Boy, I think that's a tremendous verse. God giveth it a body as it pleases what? Him. In the first birth, you got a body according to the natural law. The second time when you get up, or are changed in the church, the old people, the old covenant people being resurrected, he gives it a body as it pleases him. I have no problem understanding you, seeing you, loving you. I have no doubt but that he's able to do the same thing, only better in the next one. Then he goes on to explain in verse 39, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of man and other flesh of beasts and other fishes, others of birds. There are also celestial bodies, bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the what? Resurrection of the dead. It is sown, the body, it is sown, you know, put in the ground, in corruption, but when it is raised, it is raised what? It is raised in incorruption. The word corruption can only be used regarding a dead body. And every body who dies that body corrupts. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, you know, flesh-like. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, human weakness, natural weakness. But when it is raised, it is raised with what kind of a body? One of power. It is sown a natural body, but it is raised a what? spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is in the future a what? And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul in Genesis. Remember? The last Adam, Jesus Christ, was made a quickening, a life-quickening spirit. And if we're going to be like he is, we're going to have a body like he had. We're going to have a life-quickening spirit. That's the only place it's used. And that's the only thing I know about it. It cannot be soul life. It's a life-quickening spirit. It's a quickening made alive. How be it, verse 46, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural and after that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, Adam, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven, Jesus Christ. As is the earthy, Adam, such are they also that is earthy, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are what? Heavenly. After the second man, which is the Lord from heaven. Now watch it. Verse 49, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly, which is the quickening spirit. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit what? Incorruption. God's got to do something about it. That is, get him up. Now, behold, I show you a mystery. What do you think he's talking about now? 
the church. The mystery. The church. I'm going to show you a mystery. Behold, I show you a mystery. We, the church, shall not all die sleep. But the church has to all be what? All of the church has to be changed. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, there is also a very wonderful verse of God's Word. You know, they relate the last trump in verse 52 to the last trumpet of Revelation. I want to tell you God's got more than one last trumpet. He's not limited to just one trumpet. Even Wayne King has two of them or three. Or Guy Lombard, Lawrence Welk, he's got a few guys playing trumpet. God wouldn't, and just because it says last trump, that trumpet isn't a card game. It's a loud blow. If you relate this trumpet to the one in Revelation, that's where they get the church to go through the whole tribulation period. But this is the trumpet heralding the coming of the Lord for his church, not with them, but for them. This one fits in with the records in Thessalonians about the gathering together. Now, the dead... Their bodies have corrupted and those people in the church are going to have to get up and they're going to be raised, what? Incorruptible. But those who are alive at the time of the return of Christ who have not died, they have bodies, right? Those bodies will have to be what? But they're not corruptible. Look at verse 53. For this corruptible, that which has died corruptible, must put on what? Incorruption. And this mortal, the one who is alive at the return of Christ, is a mortal. And that mortal must put on what? There you got it in one verse. This is not talking about Kant's immortality of the soul or any of the other philosophical baloney that's been passed on through the centuries. It's not talking about the spiritualist teaching of the day that everyone is immortal. No, 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 no. This is talking about people who have not died. The spiritualists talk about people who have died, and they say they're up there, they're immortal. No, no, no. The only immortal ones are those who are mortal. The mortals must put on what? Immortality. But those who have died in the church, that's corruption. That corruption must put on what? Amen. That's why that verse a little while ago said, And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, verse 52, And we who are alive at the time of his return, our mortals, we shall be what? That's what it says. That's how it works, and that's what it means. Now, verse 54. So, when this corruptible, that which has died or fallen asleep in Christ in the church age, shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal, Those which are alive shall have put on what? Immortality. Then, 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 not now, but then, shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in what? That's right. Then shall be brought to pass the saying. After the gathering together, when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and the dead have been, the the alive have been changed, Then shall be brought to pass the saying, Death is swallowed up in what? Verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy what? 
The sting of death is what? And the strength of sin is the law. But, 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 in contrast, thanks be to God who giveth to us, the church, the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. For what? That we don't have to go in the first, truth, first resurrection. That there's something better for the church. Because the church will not all die. Some will have died, but some will still be alive. The dead will have to be raised incorruptible, but those which are alive shall be changed in a moment, a twinkling of an eye. Then shall we be gathered together, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Thanks be to God, who giveth to us the church the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a tremendous thing. Therefore, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, once every month abounding in the work of the Lord, always doing what? Abounding in the work of the Lord. Boy, that's always abounding in the work of the Lord does not mean that always everybody's going to agree with what you do. That's not the issue. The issue is, are you abounding in the work of the Lord? Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you knew that your labor, your work in the Lord is not in vain in the Lord. That's something. Why? Because this is the age of grace. Christ's return is imminent, and what we do for him is that which really is worthwhile. And that's why it says, Thanks be to God, who giveth to us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to go out and declare that victory. And we ought to straighten up the world situation on the misusages of the word corruption and Im immortal. And when these philosophers, and they've passed this off for centuries, like Kant had it, Schleiermacher, Hegel, all those fellows talk about immortality of the soul. Nothing like it. The only immortality is at the time of the return of Christ, those mortals that are living at that time have to be changed, and when they're changed, their bodies become immortal bodies. The dead in Christ shall be raised, and that immortal body and that incorruptible body that he gives to it is fashioned like unto his body. And as Corinthians says, we shall see him face to face and be like he is. Boy, the church is the greatest thing God ever did. That's why he hid it as a mystery. Had he, Satan known it, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. All of these things. And that's that tremendous 15th chapter of Corinthians we need to work it and settle it in our hearts that we'll always stand steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen?